know it's been a while, uh, so I decided to come on back to videos and kind of show you what I've been doing. Uh, I've been focusing on a lot of costume making and prop making, and I've acquired a lot more tools and a couple new skills. So what I've been working on is this. Well, scaled up version of this anyway. Uh, so this is a tiny toy of the Xander Thunder from Kill Ruger. Probably pronouncing that it got awfully. Anyway, uh, the Xander Thunder uh, figure for Kill Real Gold uh, is meant to be a much larger prop. So I figured, hey, might as well try and make it myself while I'm waiting for this uh, this gold costume to make its way in. So I'm going to show you the tools I got, tools I'm definitely going to be using on a weekly basis from now on and maybe talk a little bit about the project I'm doing and then kind of show you a few of the things I'm going to work on tonight. So, take a look. So first up on the list is my airbrush system. I have it down here just kind of on the lower portion of this rack. I keep everything in this box here, all my paints, my airbrushes, all that. Right next to it is the tank and hose. Scooting on up. First and foremost is my Ryobi bandsaw. Just picked this up not that long ago. I've been using it non-stop. Scoot on over. Part of the same series is just this uh, belt and wheel band saw, this bench, or not saw, I'm sorry, this uh, band and wheel sander. And then I've been using this Dremel scroll saw to do the finer detailing and inner cuttings of everything. So this is the prop here. This is the full sword. Can't even get it in the frame. That's how large it is right now. There we go. So, uh, sorry, I'm squinting. Put my glasses downstairs. So, yeah, this is the essentially the full length of the prop. There's gonna be more added to the thickness a little bit. Uh, but once this is all sanded and beveled down, uh, it's in intentionally going to look giant, but uh, it should look very uh, to scale. And the intended motion of it is, it should actually open up. So today I'm going to work on getting the hinge cut the way it's supposed to. I made an attempt on something else that kind of failed. But after playing with the toy and checking it out, I know there's a better way to do it. So I'm going to mark off what needs to be cut there, uh, possibly make the hinge for the, uh, I've been calling it the barrel piece. And then we'll start cutting out the face detail that goes into the edge of the sword. So let's get started on that. So while I'm living in my parents, this is my workspace. Uh, until I get the time to build out a proper workbench, I got the floor. This is, this is what I got. So, can't take this out. Uh, first step is going to be creating this hinge into the existing piece. Uh, all I'm really going to do is cut out the section that I bored out that I showed previously and just square it off with just this squared edge triangle. Uh, next step is going to be creating the raised detail that's going to cover the hinge as well as the pieces around the eye and this detailing going around the blade. Uh, currently this entire project is made out of uh, various thicknesses of MDF board and I believe uh, they're all combined to be about an inch and a half thick and the detailing that we're going to be working with is going to be cut out of quarter inch. So I'm going to grab the camera and zoom in on what I'm doing here. Alright, so essentially what I'm going to do is this section here is going to be squared off and cut off. So this way when we create a hinge going onto this bottom barrel it'll actually be able to open up, have the room to move, and we're going to use the quarter inch MDF to kind of create this raised detail that's going to cover that hinge, which is also going to take care of every little bit here. So it'll be hidden and functional. So the first step is getting this measured and squared off. We're going to cut it, and then I may skip over to doing the raised detail here before working on this piece because I want to start seeing some shape put on this and really there's no true order of operations here. So let's do this. I'm going to be overly picky here. Ah, there we go. There. Now 
perfect, but it gets the job done. Let me just double check. <clears throat> I'm gonna create just a little registration mark here, just so. Just so I can line things up in a bit. Alright, so I'm gonna take this to the to the bandsaw. Bring it back over here when I'm done. All right, so I cut out the little squared off section here, as you can kind of see. And then I, uh, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, and I'll show you here in a second, but kind of created a, a good marker for what is going to be uh, where I want the blade to be in separate from this whole hinge section. So basically everything south of this line is going to be its own separate portion of the project and everything on this side of it is going to be its own sort of separate portion. So, alright, it's a little hot in here. So you may have seen from the video, it's wearing a mask, goggles, MDF. Full of crazy chemicals that you don't want to be breathing in or getting in your eyes. So, next up is I actually traced out already the shape of the blade that is going to encompass the detailing on the sword itself. So, basically, what the shape is going to do is going to overlay here. I'm going to cut up the middle section. There's like some line detail here, and this entire eyepiece. So, next step is actually drawing it out on here, and then taking it back to the bandsaw and cutting that piece out, and then taking it to the scroll saw, cutting out the middle section all here, and then flipping it, cutting that out again, and hopefully by the end of the night I can actually glue the two ends to here, to the main body, and work off of this next time. I got all those little pieces cut out, so now it's time to take them to the belt sander, or bench sander, whatever the crap it's called nowadays. Yeah. But got them clamped on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand down this outside edge and kind of leave this inside edge a little bit raw. May even actually keep the overlap just to make a nice locking point for the barrel once it kind of gets put in place. But hopefully the goal is to get this edge nice and smooth and then maybe I can glue it tonight. We'll see. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of this with this sanding block and try and get this as smooth and even as possible. Uh, that was just a quick glimpse into everything I'm doing for this project. Uh, there's still a whole lot more that's gonna have to happen. A whole lot of things I'm teaching myself as I go. Um, I'm gonna try and film as much of it as possible and at the end of everything do a final wrap up, but I said to get something out there and kind of show that I put in effort, so please, uh, click like, subscribe, share, for the love of God, please don't let this go in vain, thanks a lot.